r slash no sleep posted by you slash elias underscore withero killing off your characters i rubbed my eyes pushing my glasses up from my nose and scrubbed the sleep from my face i had to keep going i was almost done then this would all be over and i could move on my fingers hovered over the keyboard the words waiting patiently it was time to finish this novel don't you dare don't you fucking dare i gripped my teeth be quiet I took a deep breath, and continued. Mark poured himself another bourbon, watching the way the liquid splashed into the dirty tumbler. He held it up as a sign of good will and then downed it in one gulp. He was tired, exhausted. He had come so far and now it was almost over. He felt the familiar sadness grip his chest and he hastily poured himself another drink with shaking hands. Amber's face flashed again in his mind, a beautiful vision of blue eyes and white teeth. He couldn't believe she was gone. Killed. Murdered. He still remembered the way she had looked up at him, the life draining from her eyes. There was so much blood. If he had been there, maybe he could have saved her, done something, anything. Maybe he would have heard the intruder, maybe he could have protected her, his sweet Amber. Mark shook his head, banishing the thoughts. It wouldn't do any good to dwell on the past. Nothing would change. But the future, yes, he could change the future. I paused and rubbed my face again, searching my mind for the words to come next. I sat back and let out a long breath. I had been writing for a long time, almost all day, and my brain was fried. But I wanted to write the end, get it on paper, before turning in for the day. Why don't you delete the entire thing and stop this madness? Yeah, I needed to finish it tonight. I didn't know if I could make it another day. Fuck you, I don't deserve this. You know I don't. Like hell you do, I muttered. I closed my eyes. I pushed my distractions aside and kept writing. Mark went to the kitchen, listening to the muffled sounds coming from his basement. He poured himself a glass of water and drained it slowly, letting the liquid wash down any lingering doubt. He placed the glass back into the cupboard. Amber would have scolded him if she was alive to see that. She hated when he did that. He would argue that the glass wasn't dirty and good for another use before washing. Mark suddenly gripped the lip of the counter, tears bubbling from his eyes. He sniffled and shook his head. He reached up and put the glass into the sink. Why had he argued with her over such a stupid thing? In the months after her death, he came to realize just how much he had relied on her. How much he had counted on her always being there. And now that she wasn't, he felt a hole in his life, an emptiness that only she could fill. He understood why that saying was so popular, what it truly meant now. I stopped writing again, preparing myself for the final stretch. I had been waiting to write this part the whole length of the book. I wished I was more excited or had more energy. I considered making myself another cup of coffee, but this late, that wasn't such a good idea. I leaned back in my office chair and looked at the ceiling, mentally envisioning the words on the page, how I wanted them to string together, and the overall tone of the final bit. Why don't you go get that cup of coffee? And while you're at it, why don't you grab a kitchen knife and draw it across your wrists? You murdered the main character's wife, I said with my eyes still closed. Wouldn't be much of a book if Mark didn't get his revenge. Don't you fucking dare. I could see the end now. I could feel it at the tips of my fingers, waiting to be released. I could see the scene playing out before me. Mark picked up the gun from the table. It was cold and felt good in his hand. He had imagined this moment a hundred times over. He had been so careful in his planning, so cautious in his actions, and now all that patience was about to pay off. He opened the door to the basement, his nostrils filling with the familiar scent. He creaked down the wooden stairs, the weight of what he was about to do increasing with every step. He reached the bottom and turned to the man tied to the rusty chair. He was screaming, his eyes bulging, his mouth stuffed with a dirty rag. He looked scared. I'm not scared, I'm pissed. You really think this is my fault? Fuck you. I get to decide what you are, I said quietly, cracking my knuckles. Mark stood before his wife's killer, sadness and fury crashing down around him like waves at high tide. He felt tears leaking from his bloodshot eyes and his teeth crunched together in a snarl. This piece of trash, this monster had taken his life and love away from him. And for what? A couple hundred bucks worth of jewelry and some odd cash? Mark stepped forward and raised the gun, his aim sure and steady. The man was shaking his head, screaming, his face covered in a mask of pure terror. I told you I'm not. You think I'm afraid of you? You think killing me will solve your problems? Wake up. Don't you understand you have to die? I growled. That's how these books go. Everyone gets a happy ending filled with violence and revenge. It's satisfying and that's why it sells. So just shut up and die. 
Mark wanted to say something, but the words wouldn't come out. He was too angry, too choked up with grief. And this monster didn't deserve his words. He deserved to die like the animal he was. He was going to sit there and eat this bullet, his last supper. That's a nice touch, I said to myself, pleased. That's fucking stupid. My last supper? Get over yourself, you're a hack and a spineless prick, just look at the way you're killing me. You don't get to talk anymore, I said, grinning. Mark thought about Amber as he pulled the trigger. Thought about her standing alongside him, nodding approvingly as her killer's head took the bullet, spraying blood onto the floor. It was so sudden, so instant. One minute he was alive, the next he wasn't. Mark felt something slide from his shoulders, a heaviness, his muscles releasing the knots they held. Mark dropped the gun and went back upstairs without looking behind him. That monster didn't deserve another look. I typed out the end and stretched. I had finally finished it. I smiled and mentally patted myself on the back. I picked up the little pill bottle on my desk, looked at the small white devils inside, and then chucked the orange plastic into the trash can. I wouldn't need them anymore. I had done it. I walked to my office windows, blue and red lights pulsing through the darkness. They had found out, just like I knew they would. I smiled. What appropriate timing. I waited for them to break in the front door. I sat down on my couch and picked up the picture frame on the coffee table. I gazed at it smiling. I miss you, Amber, I said softly. I was going to jail, but at least I'd be going alone. Posted by you slash Elias underscore Witherow. Alone with my nightmare. I've been having bad dreams lately. Nightmares. It started about three months ago. It's always the same, every single night. I've tried everything I can think of, but no matter what, nothing seems to help. I live alone, no wife or girlfriend to speak of. No one to bother with my nightly horrors. I wake up thrashing, screaming, covered in sweat. Sometimes I cry, sitting there in the sticky darkness, with my face in my hands. I cry because I'm terrified, I cry because I'm frustrated, I cry because there's no one here to tell me it's okay. Some nights I get up, the piece of sleep shattered by the dreamscape horrors. I go out and sit on my porch after pouring a stiff drink. I watch the acres of lonely fields surrounding my house sway in the gentle nighttime breeze. I watch the moon, its glow a white cut across the sky. I wait for the sweat to dry on my face. I wait till my nerves settle. I wait for the sun to rise. I wonder how much longer I can take this. I wonder why I keep having the same dream, over and over again, night after night. It always starts the same. I'm standing in the woods, at night, with tall trees towering overhead. I can hear a strong wind rustle the leaves, the old wood moaning. There's no ground beneath my feet, just empty darkness. I wander through the forest, empty of foliage, looking for something. I don't know what it is I'm looking for, but there's an urgency in the air. As I walk, I hear a voice on the wind, shh. It warns me, a low rumble from the heavens. I know I need to be silent. I know I need to be quiet or something bad will happen. I take extra care to silence my movement. After I've walked some distance, I see a door ahead of me. It's red and slightly ajar. It's maybe 20 feet in front of me. Even though I'm in the middle of an empty forest, I know that door leads somewhere else. I know there's something bad behind the maroon stained wood. As I get closer, I freeze. Yes, there's something horrible behind that door. Something evil. I can feel it approaching from the other side. I feel an urge to run, get away, my heart thundering in my ears. I watch in horror as a shadow darkens the crack in the door. Something is looking at me, an eye, yellow and menacing, peeking out into the darkness. Before I can scream, I hear a voice yell my name, and it's terrified for me. It comes from the sky, all around me, and I think it's the same voice that beckoned me to be silent. I turn and run, feeling the door open behind me. And that's when the horn begins. Deep and bellowing, it tolls out a long ominous note. Over and over again, louder and louder, coming from every direction. I cover my ears, terrified, knowing that the sound means something bad is about to happen. I can hear the sound of footsteps behind me, heavy and agile. Something is chasing me. No. There's more than one. It sounds like a hundred hammers being driven into muddy earth. It's getting closer and I dare not look back. I'm openly crying, tears streaming off my cheeks as fear clenches my guts. I can feel myself growing winded. I know there's nothing to run to, the forest an endless labyrinth constructed by the nightmare. The empty darkness below my feet stretches off into the creaking trees and I know there is no safety to be found here. As my chest heaves and the last of my strength drains from my legs, I stumble and fall. Screaming, I turn over and pain erupts from my chest as they reach me. 
I'm mauled, torn into shreds, one long rip at a time. As I die, the horn continues to blare and it's the last thing I hear before I wake up. It's been like that for three months. Every single night. I don't know what brought it on, what's causing it, but it keeps returning like a cancer. I feel dread as the sun goes down, knowing that soon I will have to go to bed. The dream terrifies me. The dread that fills me upon waking is crippling and I am overwhelmed with horror. It takes me a long time to settle down, steady my breath. Well tonight, something changed. The dream came and went like it always did and I awoke screaming. I scrubbed the tears from my eyes, counting to 10 out loud. It was an exercise I had picked up, recommended by the doctor I had seen about the nightmares. It helped calm me. As I reached 10, I lowered my hands from my face and my eyes went wide. My mouth dried up and my heart dropped into my stomach. In the distance, I heard the horn. It was just like in the dream, that low note repeating with horrific certainty. I pushed the covers aside, hands shaking, and went to the kitchen. I stared out the window, licking my dry lips. The horn was coming from outside, its deep rumble echoing into the night, the noise traveling to my ears from a great distance. Knees shaking, I went to my front door and pushed it open. I froze, heart seizing in my chest. The red door from my dream was in the field, its frame lit by the full moon. It was about a hundred yards from me, the tall grass brushing against the dark wood. The distance horn began to grow louder. My eyes bulged and a scream rose in my throat. The door began to open. I just woke up. I don't know what's happened. I'm scared out of my mind. I puked a couple of minutes ago, my stomach sour and sick. My body doesn't feel right. My head is killing me. There's something else. Something I can't believe, but no matter how many times I close my eyes, when I open them it remains the same. My house is surrounded by dark forest. Somehow, some way, I'm in that fucking nightmare. I'm writing this out at my desk, hoping that somehow someone will read this. I don't want to be forgotten. I'm so alone here. The horn has started again.